All right, uh, Alan K is calling in from Downers Grove, Illinois. What's going on? Hey, um, yeah, you know, he was talking about this whole police brutality situation. You know, supposedly these guys get, you know, psychological evaluations before they join the force and everything. And I, here's the bottom line. Clearly, whatever these psychological evaluations are, it, it's not doing the trick for them, for damn sure. And, uh, I mean... We need, like, we need, like, third parties or something going on. That's interesting. Um, how do you form a third party? See, if it's a collective, you know, made up of people in the society, how do you form, yeah, a separate... Co- I mean, that's, a, that's a really interesting question. And, I mean, um, to be perfectly honest, I don't really have all the answers. I'm kind of an idiot spouting off ideas off the top of his head. Um, I just... You I called the out. right place. Well, I've I, yeah, no, I, and I, I'm sure like we wouldn't actually need to really speculate on that. I'm sure somebody's uh, actually, uh, if that's something, uh, anybody in the control room or something might be able to send me. If you guys can find, um, I would bet that uh, somebody's already done the study in like whatever psychological filtering there is for police forces. I would bet somebody out there has already figured out that they're to uh, attract the uh, violent schizophrenic assholes that we deal with on most police forces mm-hmm. um, yeah, no, for sure. rather than to keep them out. Exactly what you're out. <clears throat> we were hearing years ago, um, like years ago, like 15 years ago about guys being, uh, being barred from, from police forces, I guess, for having too high of an IQ. Um, oh yeah. You know, I heard about that one too, although I couldn't really find any of the studies you know what? I think that was. I think that was one of those. Uh, totally surprised me either. You know, I mean, like it does kind of seem like there's a certain intelligence level amongst police officers that I run into. They don't seem stupid by any means, but they don't seem particularly thoughtful either. I mean, that might just be because they're on patrol and they're giving off a certain air of authority because of that. But uh, you know. Eh. I would say I, I'm gonna go ahead and say most cops I've dealt with were stupid or at least acted that way. Um, they don't generally when you deal with a cop, you're really lucky if he's either capable of or willing to deal in like logical reasoning. You know, um, they mostly just behave like dogs, and if you treat them like dogs, you tend to get better results. I found. Um, yeah, I wish that was a joke. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I laughed at him, but... So anyways, um, what else you got for us? Um, I don't know. I'm really interested to hear about these uh, paranormal investigators. I might call back in with questions uh, once you've actually got them up and running. But as far as the top issue, that was kind of just my two cents on it. But we really got to get to the bottom of what this psychological testing is and like whether or not it's effective or like you're saying is actually bringing in these maniacs. Because something, something's wrong. Something. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, if anyone <clears throat> in the- looks like they want to put a caller through, uh, we got Patrick in Berwyn, Illinois. What's going on, Patrick? What's going on? Yeah, uh, you don't need to. Uh, you don't need to scream, sir. No, that's fine. I don't give a shit. Talk about it. Yes, I posted it on the Facebook page. All right. Well, when you get to a computer, right. Well, they're they're hitting him with a flashlight. Yeah. Well, whatever. They still have to go to court, and then they still have to ask the dude. The whole process is stupid. The whole justice system is stupid. They have no authority over it. Listen, it's on video, and they're like, were you on the foot ground at this point? Yes. Were they kicking you in the head at this point? Yes. Like, no, it's right there. Put the hammer down on that fucking cop and let it be. You know what I mean? No, yeah, the My vi- favorite type of video that I watch on a regular basis is people, like, stealing in Brazil, and then everybody on the block beats them to death. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. That's hey, my hey, favorite hey, type hey, of video to watch. I don't, I don't care for Sorry fucking... About that. I don't know, it's like, you gotta submit this in writing. Like, there's a video of them beating the dude's ass. What the fuck? Um, also, 
Go ahead. How, exa- how exactly did they, did they, ex- you know, uh, to that alien you were talking about with the no dick, how did they, what did they do? Like, just check if it had a dick? Or like, they cut it open? Or how did that work? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, I just think... mommy. Yeah, well, no, that's what you do when you find a mummy. That's uh, you uh, you pull its pants down uh, first no, and foremost. I agree with. Uh, I mean, you sit there and ask questions. It's right there on video. I mean, it's kind of stupid. No, and and yeah, of course it is, and it's you know, it's all part of the 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 work of. Uh, you know the me well I was talking about the the way the news covers it is the same thing, they cover it in this way of like the allegations while they're playing a video of two cops sitting on a guy and one cop beating him with a flashlight they're saying they're, there's yeah it it if the allegations are true or whatever just like you know yeah I mean obviously yeah, they, show a, they show a clip of him yeah like you said like why did they play the clip of him like I'll oh, just let him go get some gas like. Okay, and he has warrants. Like what? Well, no, and they play clips that make him sound stupid. Is was yeah, my point, right. you know. Um, right. It's bullshit. There's there's no need for anybody to tell everybody not to go beat the fuck out of that police officer until he doesn't go to work anymore. That's what should be going on. Well, yeah, and I'm a little bit myself. I'm a little bit sick of seeing videos of cops beating people up while 20 people stand around filming it with their phones instead of kicking the fucking cop in the stupid fucking pig face. <sighs> uh, yeah. You no, know, those videos are great. Like that soccer player that that the drop kicked that cop in the head for beating up that guy. Oh, that's a that's a classic. That cool. Yeah, yeah. But those yeah, are. I mean, like you're talking. Awesome. That's that's people from other countries. You know, where maybe the police don't have the kind of overbearing presence that because like a lot of people in other countries. I'm not exactly sure which ones because I'm dumb. But some you know, there's other countries where I see people commenting on the internet. Uh, wow, I can't believe you guys in the United States have let your police, you know, treat you this way and let, let them run away. We, we would never let this happen. This is crazy. How, how do you let them push you around? And they, what is drink? I, I see people all the time, like, you know, is, is it illegal to be drunk? Is it <laughs> illegal to drink outside, you know, and stuff? And like, yeah, there's a lot of places where people don't stand for it, I guess. In the but... U.S. it's because we're all, we're all like little weird, maybe weirdos. So we're like, everybody's offended by words with words games like you gotta go to court and the one who can talk better at the particular moment that is awesome gets to win mm-hmm. it's the stupidest thing ever there's a video of a dude getting hurt and that guy hurt him case closed did you know mm-hmm. fuckers and in other countries they shoot down fucking police officers with bazookas that's why um yeah, max if you want to get them on the line um I don't want to get their names wrong. I think it's Ron Smiles and Lori Esposito. Uh, yeah, Ron Smiles. And uh, Lori Esposito, right? I wasn't given her number. No, Lori Taylor Esposito. They're, they're I think, an item, and oh. they uh, run the thing together, so she's going to be on, too. Um, Look, we're dope. Uh, let's see. I think we're going to go to our guests. Are we ready? Ron, are you there? You guys are out here. Hey, how you doing? How are you, sir? Great. Uh, just trying to get through the first show, you know. <laughs> it's, it's going all yeah, right, though. It, it, we're, we're listening and sounding pretty good. Cool. Thanks, man. Um, is lo- just, just one thing I'd like to weigh on, if I may. Oh, yeah, please. Go ahead. About this police brutality stuff? Sure. Uh, meeting a law enforcement field and a, a police officer for an area department out here. Wait, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, being a police officer myself. Oh, and, uh, I didn't know that. Shit. All right, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, what I want to say is that uh, I'll be the first one to tell you that there are some bad officers out there, but these old broad brushes with all the same brush and the same paint. There's a lot of us out here that are really hard not to be assholes. All right. So there's. So you're saying there's a lot of you that try... I, I mean, you're cutting out a little. You're saying there's a lot of you that try really hard not to be assholes? We work very hard not to be assholes. What do you mean by that? You should take the light. You're in the paper. So the one thing that you probably won't hear about is that uh, me and my partner just probably about two weeks ago, we saved the life of a three-week-old baby who was who was not breathing. Sure. My, uh, you know, I mean, I there's there's always going to be positive stories. Uh, my major oh. my major issue is the way the system operates and uh, the way that there's no accountability and the way that there's like, you know, tendencies towards a lot of uh, negative behaviors. Um, oh, we have all the video cameras and the squad cars and such. There's, there's plenty of accountability. 
Uh, I don't find that to be true. Generally, when I when I see a lot of, uh, you know, and I'm not, I, I haven't done some kind of exhaustive, you know, analytical piece or research or anything, but when I see, you know, stories most of the time, I'm seeing police walk, you know, most of the time that they're involved in these high-profile uh, abuse cases. Would you not agree with that? Maybe here and there, but not all, no. Well, uh, that's my perception and the perception of a lot of people I know, but... Uh, I, I, I totally understand. I mean, I see, I see the same things that you see, and sometimes I think, you know, that's way out of line on our part, and that they need to be disciplined and dealt with. Sure. So you're not someone who thinks it's, it, you know, you know, a lot, a lot of guys who are cops become kind of part of that gang mentality. Um, no. You know what I'm talking about. No, I think that if we're going to enforce the law, we need to walk the walk. And if we step out of line, then we deserve to be punished just like anybody else. Uh, yeah, right. And yeah, no, I, I mean, I just without, without having like some kind of uh, really, like exhaustive kind of uh, statistical study in front of me. I guess we could go back and forth all day. It just seems to me like like there's very little accountability with a lot of this stuff. That's just how it seems to me. And a lot of people, I mean, um, so what, what was your issue with what we said? Well, mostly these video clips just show people getting their asses kicked. Right. I find it, I find it curious that it just shows the part where the police seem to be beating somebody down. It doesn't show what up, what up to that event. No, that's, that's true. Cool. Um, however, kind of, you know, when, when you, when you have that job and, uh, and you you want that responsibility, would you not agree that there you know with the job that a police officer is supposed to do comes with a lot of responsibility and you're supposed to be patient and measured and you know isn't it or no, absolutely so when I see a video of a guy who's already submitted and is being beaten continuously, it doesn't really matter what led up to that you know. It's the it's the police officer's job to act in a professional manner at that point, isn't it? Absolutely, I, I'll be the first one to agree with you that when the fight's over, the fight's over. Right, exactly. Well, and that's true in a lot of things. I mean, that's like I don't know if you ever watch fight videos on YouTube and shit like that, but there's kind of like a disturbing tendency these days for people to continue to beat each other when it's unnecessary in all walks of life. But when it's uh, a police officer, it's more disturbing to me because it's official oppression in that they're backed up by, you know, this sort of monopoly on the violence and they're the only ones allowed to use it, you know. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, and I, I don't want to, you know, try to say there's no cops doing anything good. It's just that, you know... Uh, <laughs> they're allowed it's it's a it facilitates the the system of of law enforcement that we have now facilitates the bad cops to go way further than they'd be able to without that uh power backing you know well, unfortunately what it is is that what you see mostly is the bad cops being bad right well that's that's that makes that's that makes for more interesting news i guess yeah apparently it does but so you're saying, um, well, so I, you know, I understand what you're saying. I, it just, to me, there's a, there's a disconnect there, um, in that, you know, you could do good and, her and heroic things as an ordinary citizen. I, and you know, I hate that distinction too. There's a, there's a tendency to, for people to make a distinction between cops and citizens when cops are citizens, right? You're not. Uh, right. So. Absolutely. So, you know. Uh, you could do the same heroic things without having the power to do the bad things too, couldn't you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, I, I guess that's the, the, the distinction, you know, in the point you're making and the point I'm making um, is that I don't like the structure of the system allowing for the bad things to take place. Cause I think the bad things are inevitable. I'm someone who believes in the old saying about, uh, Absolute power corrupting absolutely. Well, 
the difference if it's law enforcement that's taking over the power and beating people down, or if it's gangs, or if it's disrespectful citizens that get stopped on a traffic stop and decide to spit on an officer and say, I dare you to take me out of this car, I dare you to do this, and then just drive off and run the officer over. So who's in, in the right then? In what situation who's in the right? A citizen gets pulled over. Uh-huh. Well, for it, speeding. For speeding? Speed, the citizen then rolls down the window, spits on the cop, says, I ain't giving you shit, pulls away, runs over the cop. Now, who's at fault? The cop? Yes, for pulling the citizen over. Uh, he didn't, you know, I mean, it depends. See, this is a this is a really complicated issue to me because sometimes I would say, yeah, um, when you pull someone over, whether you like it or not, what it actually is is a threat of violence against that person. Um, not... <sighs> Not direct and immediate, admittedly, but it, what it is is you're saying, if you don't stop, more of us will join the chase. Uh, if you decide to get out of your car and run, we'll chase you and tackle you. If you fight back, we'll hurt you and possibly kill you. Um, All right. Well, now let's just slow down a little bit. No, I mean, no, I yeah. I, I, I understand that. that's that's extrapolating it all the way out. You know what I mean? But uh, huh. that's what oh, I'm saying. This It's a very complicated issue. And my view on something, since you gave the example of speeding, you know, I wish we lived in a society where there didn't have to be these arbitrary, you know, you want this, uh, this speed and I did, you know, the law declares that to be unsafe and now you owe us money for some reason. I mean, that's kind of stupid to me. Um, the whole thing is kind of stupid to me. So it's a big conversation. Well, that's fine, but it's not quite fair to section out every officer being the same person. Oh, I would, n I would never do that. You're, but you did. You said that all cops are dogs. No, listen, I'm, I, and some of that was, was tongue-in-cheek, and I'm, I'm attempting to be entertaining. But I do think that the large, the, uh, the majority of police officers I've dealt with in my life behave more with that animal mentality. That's what I mean. They, they, don't, they don't respond to logical reasoning. They respond to uh, body language. Um, you know, uh, just kind of emotion, uh, anger, whatever. Uh, and they're not a lot of, a, a lot of times in my own personal experience, a lot of police officers I've dealt with can't really be reasoned with is what I meant. Meaning you can't get out of a ticket or you can't speak anything. You just like say if you got pulled over or whatever, you're saying that you've never been cut loose from a ticket or cut loose from, you know, whatever. Uh, sure I have, yeah. So, yeah, usually when you, well, usually if you, uh, properly submit, you know, and you, uh, satisfy them psychologically that they're bigger and stronger than you, they might let you off with a warning. But, uh, if you stand your ground and act like a man, they usually won't. I know that. Um, but see, that's the thing. We have some philosophical differences here, um, there's a lot we're we're mi between I'm, what I'm saying to you probably sounds really fucked up. But if I went through all the steps of logic to how I got there, you'd probably understand what I meant. Um, well, that may be what it comes down to is that people want us out there doing our jobs as long as we don't do it to them. No, no, no. And I'm saying that I don't like your job, though. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, I don't like my job that much either, but it's a necessary <laughs> thing in the life. <laughs> all right. All right. How else would you have a job where you have to sometimes be on, uh, on the cuff and you have to have that mentality of being strong and stern because you don't know if the guy that you're stopping has gone and he's going to blow your face off when you walk up to the door. Exactly. So you shouldn't be stopping him, probably. That's that's the thing, is is you're walking so, up to the car. You're, oh, you're, but you're walk. here's the thing. You're, you're pulling someone over. Now we could here this is the big conversation is like I I don't have the answers of how exactly law enforcement should go because you know I agree in you know I I I I agree with a lot of principles of anarchy in that it's a, you know it deals with self ownership and taking responsibility for your own safety um and that whole conversation which I'm sure you've probably had before um and you know the idea that people may or may not need you know, the police to protect them or something, right? Um, All right. Well, just real quick, though, before you go on that whole big spiel, just think of it this way, just real quick in a nutshell. An officer is doing their job. An officer runs a license plate to check and see if it's either valid, whatever. 
finds out the owner is uh, the owner of the vehicle and is the driver of the vehicle is revoked. Not only are they revoked, but they've had four DUIs already. Okay, uh -oh. now they're behind the wheel and they're drunk. Your family is driving next to this car. This car sideswipes your family, kills them. Sounds okay. like okay. Okay. Now, now, please come. They arrest the guy because why? Well, he caused an accident and killed your family. So now you're gonna take that piece, that person to court and sue them? No. Why not? Wait. So who's left? Is I, is the whole family dead? Your family is dead. But I wasn't there, so I could sue no. the guy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I might be so distraught that I might not even think about it. I don't know. Why? Well, I don't understand where you're going. I'm sorry. Uh, well, see, where I'm going with this is this. If you, law enforcement is law enforcement. The court system is court system. It upholds the law. If that officer doesn't ar uh, arrest the person that killed your family, they just go off scot-free and they go off drinking again and they go get another seven, eight, nine, twelve. Oh. So you're you're describing what a complete lack of law enforcement would be? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what our anarchy is. Serve yourself, not others. I don't so know. Well, serve himself. they didn't care about your family. He just kept serving himself, kept driving, doing whatever he wanted to do. Because ah, uh, you know, fuck the popo. I'm just gonna go do what I want to do. Well, now where you at? Yeah, no, no, no. And that's what I was actually. That's what I was saying before. I was saying I, you know, I agree with a lot of the arguments of anarchists. However. I, well, what I was saying was I go back and forth. It's a, it's to me, I don't really know how exactly law enforcement should go because, yeah, there's always a question. Uh, somebody murders someone. Say it's not even an accident. Say it's a malicious act. You know, um, do we want to live in the world where people just take their own revenge all the time? That might be pretty unpleasant too, you know. I mean, I agree. Um, but... What it is that there's a fine line, and you have good officers, you have bad officers, you have good people, you have bad people. You got good bankers, you got bad bankers, you got good lawyers, you got bad lawyers. I know, and you know what, though? I, I know that argument. Um, I would argue, from a certain perspective, it's not possible to be a good cop because the job itself comes with certain requirements that are immoral. Um, you know, I, I just think there's a basic immorality in... Uh, Sort of like our, this what I would call arbitrary code enforcement, like what I described with uh, speeding and things like that. And a lot of, you know, a lot of the shit you probably don't like to do as a police officer because you know, you know, it's a lot of it's bullshit and you know it sucks and you don't like to do it, but you have to do a certain amount of it and whatever. Um, that's the part that I would argue makes it pr next to impossible to be totally moral as a police officer. Do you know what I mean? See, the problem with that, though, is you don't believe how many phone calls we get about speeding vehicles through town. So we're out there well, doing Well, right, because if someone's acting in an unsafe way, now we've, we've entered a different conversation. But if I'm driving 10 miles an hour down my street on a clear day with no one around, I mean 10 miles an hour over the speed limit, I should say, on a clear day with no one around and a cop sits there and decides that now I owe the, the township 80 bucks, why? How, is that, how does that make sense to you? Residential, man. I mean, you get, there's somebody that, that out there decided to write you a ticket. I mean, technically, you're speeding, but I write you a ticket for 10 over? Probably not. No, I understand, but I'm, I'm just giving you back an example from the other perspective, from the other side of things, is that there's a lot of arbitrary code enforcement that isn't it, is, you know, that, it, it, and from my view, you know. But now, if we were to ignore you going 10 miles over the speed limit. Next thing you know, we're going to have somebody calling up saying, you know what, that officer saw that guy speeding. He didn't do his job and pull him over and write him a ticket. Right, and he'd be like a tattletale, right? And there's thousands of them. Yeah, so what? I mean, what do we kowtow to the tattletales for? Why do we Why do we adjust the way we live based on that on, on that kind of behavior? I mean, uh, because they pay, they pay everybody who works for the city's salary because they are taxpayers, because they are this, they are that. Right. No, I understand. And uh, and again, there would be my problem with kind of the, the way that we have the whole system set up. Um, you know, uh, going back to the stuff about um, sort of petty code enforcement. I mean, you don't you can't tell me that you feel good at night writing parking tickets, which you must do once in a while. Right. Yep. And uh, don't especially feel good about it. No. 
I mean, and you can't tell me that you like it when you show up to a situation that could probably be calmed down, but you have certain protocol and you got to take somebody to lock up for 36 hours or something. You know what I mean? All that kind of shit. There's a lot of stuff you don't enjoy, right? Well, I do have discretion, so I pretty much decide who's going to jail and who's not. Oh, I know. Well, isn't there, I've seen a lot of things with like, you know, if there's any kind of domestic disturbance, somebody's got to be taken for the night or something. Um, yeah. If there's physical impact, yeah. If you, if you get somebody that you're in a, in a relationship with, be it husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, brother, sister, if you hit them, then you're pretty much going to jail. All right. So anyways, whatever. That's a moot point, really. But yeah, that's uh, what I'm getting at is um, the job itself comes with a lot of baggage. Uh that that I would do, do you would would you actually here would you would you admit that some of the things you do as a police officer are immoral from a basic right and wrong standpoint? Immoral? No. No. Nope. See, that's my thing. I think, and now I appreciate you staying on it. This was these, by the way. Uh, if anybody's if anybody's listening, uh, Ron smiles and Lori Esposito. Uh, Lori Taylor Esposito, right? I'm sorry. Um, and uh, they're from Bump in the Night, uh, Paranormal Investigations in Joliet. Earlier in the show, we were talking about police brutality, and I espoused some very anti-police uh, views, not knowing that Ron is a police officer. What? And would you? Is it? A, would you share what town you're a police officer in? I can't say that. No? Okay, that's fine. Um, is it in the western suburbs? It's in the state area. I just, just you know what, honestly, just to kind of know what kind of, uh, uh, what kind of an area you, you, you're in, you know? Um, so it's in a, it's in a, a, we'll just say it's in a suburb, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> I, I was spouting off and uh, saying some horrible things about police, and then Ron came on, and I had to engage him in an intellectual discussion, if anyone's just joining us. Um, so that's just to update people in case they didn't understand what the hell we were talking about. Um, so anyways, uh, you know, you're saying, no, there's nothing that you do as a police officer that you would consider immoral? No. Right. I don't always like what I have to do as a police officer, but that's the job. But do I think it's immoral? No. Well, so just because something's your job, it, it, that's not that's not what you're saying makes it uh, moral, right? Right. I mean, what I mean is, uh, does it, it is the fact that you're doing something because it's your job? Is that is that what validates it to you? If I thought something was going to violate my, my values as a police officer, I probably wouldn't do it. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I guess maybe, you know... Sorry, I, I, I didn't hear that. Um, that he doesn't jeopardize his integrity. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, no, and I'm not saying that you would jeopardize, jeopardize your personal integrity in the way that you judge yourself. Um I guess I guess I'm just saying, you know, uh, the way that things are enforced. You know, do you know what happens to someone? Say that you how many how many uh, how many marijuana arrests do you think you've made in your career? A lot. And I bet you've let a lot of people go too, right? I've let a number go. Yeah. Um, do you know what happens to someone <laughs> after they're arrested for marijuana? I mean, there's a wide range that of things that can happen, but... It, it depends on how much they have. You are out there on the street making the real-time decision to send this person into a world of shit based on something that didn't... There was no There was no victim. It's a, it's a crime that... I, I, I would disagree. Well, okay, but let me just... I'll give you uh, uh, the floor to disagree in one second. Um, okay. I, uh... Can't in this day and age imagine how anyone could think that it's okay for marijuana to be illegal or it's right. Um, you you might disagree, you might not. I have no idea. But uh, 
I, I just can't imagine it, and I can't imagine how anyone could justify um, arresting and, and putting someone into a penal system that only will will turn them into a, a much worse criminal, a much worse criminal, you know, for these little tiny shitty crimes. Um, I can't imagine how anyone could see that as, as a moral thing. And you, you go ahead. Okay, so but everybody is aware at this point in time that marijuana is illegal, right? Wrongfully so, yes. Okay. But it, it is illegal at this time, and I'm not the one that puts the bag of marijuana in their pocket when they go out driving around in their car and I stop them. That doesn't, that doesn't justify um, the fact that you're stopping them. That, that just gives you this, you know, a, a legal precedent, I guess. But that, doesn't, that has nothing to do with morality. Well, when you leave the house with your bag of pot in your pocket, you know that if you come in contact with the police and we find it, you're going to be in some trouble. Maybe. No, you, you know that, that you're probably going to get into some trouble. Well, maybe. Honestly, a lot of cops will let you go nowadays, but yeah, maybe. Go ahead. I'm, 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 depending on what you have, I mean, if you just got a little dying bag, you can maybe work something out. It's not the, like I said, it's not the worst crime in the world. Uh... No, it's not. A, but see, but here's the thing. The person with the bag of pot in their pocket hasn't committed any act of immorality by having it. They've well, bro- uh, they've broken a code. They've broken a penal code. Yeah. But that that has nothing. I mean, you're not so naive that you would you would actually think that our penal code and our our legal system is directly in line with morality and, and what's right and wrong. Are you? So, yes, I'm no. But well, exactly. So the answer is no. So you don't think it's all exactly moral. I think we could do better. Well, and one one thing we could do better on is not making criminals out of people who use drugs. You know, I mean, obviously, uh, obviously, you don't deal with. Well, I don't know where you are. Actually, things are different in the suburbs now. I don't know if you deal with uh, street gangs or any of the major gangs. You know, but. Uh, what what is your view on how gangs get their power and what drives gangs? Huh. Drugs, right? Drugs, pretty much. Well, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And 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 if they were legal, then should I finish? Then the gangs would have no means of uh, you know producing money, or there would be no purpose for the gang, really. You know, you might go back to having, like, street cliques to protect each other and shit. But, like, you know, do you understand what I mean? And you've heard this argument a thousand times, I'm sure. Um, so this, this is an argument. You're, not, you're looking at the, just one side of that. Where do you think that they're going to get their money from next? What do you think that they need to survive? Money. So then what? Is it going to come to stealing, looting, like what's going on now? Killing people for, for their purse? Killing people for their wallet? Uh, I mean... Well, who commit? Who do you? Who commits crimes like that, though? I mean, is it people? Is it? Is it for money? For drugs. Need for money. Period. For, for drugs, though, like, isn't it like eighty-five percent of people in prison are in prison because of a, a crime they committed, either because they were on or to get drugs? Possibly. Well, the point is. It's the illegality of drugs that drives the prices up as high as they are. It's the illegality of drugs that creates the counterculture that draws kids into it and that they find attractive. And, you know, it's the, it's the same thing as the old cowboy myth and, the, and you know, the, the loner. Well, you think the law started in the first place. You're saying uh, make all of this, all the drugs legal, so therefore the gangs that sell this dispense and they're going to be street clicks. What do you think started the law in the first place? Let's make it illegal to have drugs, so therefore there won't be any more. Right. There won't be any of this. I know. Any... And that <laughs> it's been seventy. It's been seventy-five. Whatever. How many years? Uh, since nineteen thirty-eight. Uh, since most of the drugs were made illegal, and I don't know about you, but I've. I'm pretty sure there's no illegal drugs left anywhere in the world, right? What do you mean? Well, what I mean is it doesn't work. Prohibition doesn't work. You know, it just moves the market into a different area. And by the way, government has always taken advantage of the fact that drugs are illegal too. 
you know? I mean, it, you've got the internet. You can look this stuff up. Uh, look, how many times has a military plane been uh, stopped by another government agency and they found cocaine being transported or the CIA? You know, I mean, it's been, I, I just don't want to go down the list, but you've got the internet. Yeah, you can look this up. You know about this, don't you? There's, yeah, there's there's discrepancies in everything. Police no de- police departments all over the country dealing drugs for for I mean, it's not even worth it's it's just you know this stuff. Come on, you know this stuff. It's just it's not working. Drug prohibition is not working, and it's only causing more trouble. You're treating people uh, who a have a you know a lot of people. Let's say somebody's a heroin or you know, a habitual cocaine user who's doing coke every day, you know, and they've got a sickness and they've got a problem. Putting them through the legal system and the penal system is not going to help them. It's going to hurt them. And and we all know this. If you're a reasonable adult, you, you look at the situation, you know. I mean, it's not, it doesn't make, it doesn't, there's no rehabilitation process in our prisons, you know. Um, there's probably a few success stories, but the, the overwhelming number of people are not being rehabilitated. This shit is not working. Um, and, I mean, you're approaching a problem that's that's probably should be dealt with with compassion, with, like, authoritarian force and violence. That's the problem. Okay, so what's the better way? To legalize uh, whatever people choose to to consume on their own, you know, that's the better way. And uh, I think... Well, if they have money buying it, then they're going to rob, cheat, buy, steal. And... Yeah, but without, without the artificial inflation um, going on, because these things are cornered by, by opportunists in a black market, you know, without the, without the prices being driven up like that, they will be, uh, you know, might be scary and it might be you know, better for our problem, for our problem with addicts, because yeah, nobody likes, I'm not saying, you know, I don't like, I don't want people to do heroin, but I think it should be legal. Um, because I think that if we want to approach the problem as a society and put funds and energy and time towards it as a collective, we could do a lot better job than putting people in jails where they can still get drugs and enter into a criminal culture. That's probably worse from the one they that than the one they came from. Uh, you know, I think we... you're going to have the good and bad with every single thing that you discuss. Our, our your point was was with your your perception of all police officers being dogs, and that's what we want to discuss. Like first of all, you know, with just to, to rebut on that, not all police officers are dogs. Maybe the ones that you've dealt with, but then obviously you're in wrong neighborhoods or something i have no idea no no and what i said what i said was you get better results if you treat them like dogs i didn't say that they literally are dogs but you know what as i explained you know i'm trying to be entertaining and comedic and i'm using a bit of hyperbole and just you know um so i i do apologize if that offended you personally however there's some truth in what I said, being that they tend to operate in an animalistic mind state, and it kind of helps to deal with them that way when they act like that. Now, Ron might be different if I ran into Ron. I don't know. You know, not every cop is a raving lunatic, you know. Not every cop is incapable, you know. I, I don't know. That's all we're trying to say. No, I understand that. I have a problem with, like, uh, the, with as I've said, with the system that allows the bad cops to thrive, you know? Um, And you might too. I mean, for all I know, you might want to say more than you're saying right now, you know, and you may have seen things and, and, and done things and whatever. Um, I think that what I would urge, what I would urge you to think about is the department I work for. I mean, we're all a bunch of pretty good guys and we haven't had any problems like that. You don't have problems with like corruption and stuff like that. Nope. Not at all. No. Um, I'm from a town called Willow Springs. You ever heard of that? Yep. Willow Springs, yeah? Yep. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, they have a pretty historic uh, 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 police department in terms of uh, corruption and things like that. So it does happen in the suburbs, you know? You don't know. Um, 
But anyways, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to, if we're, since we've, in, you know, earlier I was being entertaining and I was being emotional, but since we've entered the intellectual arena, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I don't understand that cops are people and nuanced and can be, you know, uh, can be good and, and, and whatever in, in their own personal lives. And, and yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to, uh, to make that statement. I'm just, you know what it is? I'm angry. I'm angry at the things I see. I'm angry at the way I've been treated overall. And I have been treated in the vast majority of times I've dealt with cops there. I've dealt with nice cops. You know what? There were, there was a couple guys, we were 17. We'd go out, party, be smoking weed, be hanging out, whatever. They'd pull up. They'd say, hey, go the fuck home. What the fuck are you doing? You know, and uh, they didn't get us in trouble and, you know, whatever. It's it, There's all I've, – I've had the, the range of experiences. But I really can with confidence say the majority of times that police show up to a situation uh, where there's some kind of doings occurring – they don't, <laughs> they don't tend to de-escalate things, and a lot of the times I've been pulled over, they don't act reasonably. That's all. And, and a lot of videos I see, and you know what? People don't make and upload videos of positive experiences they have with cops because no one would watch it, and there's no, you know, no one's... No one's exactly right. Uh, but, you know, that's the thing is even if, even if it was only 1% of the time that this, this stuff is going on, it still needs to be brought into the light because... It's, it's, nobody should be officially oppressed. Nobody should be bullied or treated badly in, in really any way with this. And I 100% agree with that, but that also brings the light that it's only 1% of the time, which is too much. But 99% of the other officers out there, out there doing their jobs and doing it very well. Yeah, and again, I think just since we seem to be kind of wrapping things up, I would I would still uh, leave my point out there that it's the job that you guys are asked to do and and forced to do and in whatever way rewarded to do that uh, is is really you know there's a lot of things to me about it that just aren't moral I guess. Um, Right, well, enough, 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 let's talk about some ghosts. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, well, thanks for the thanks for the uh, the polite discourse on that topic. Um, let's uh, let's talk ghosts. So you are a police officer who runs a paranormal investigation group. Yes, I am. And that's pretty cool. You're out in Joliet. Do you live in Joliet? 